Welcome to How To RC and the Basics of Soldering. What you see here is a soldering iron. This is a very old soldering iron from Radio Shack. It has a really small tip and is for soldering little circuit boards like this printed circuit board here. Not much use for what we're doing. They make, th this is a 35 watt. They make bigger ones. You might be able to get by with a 40 watt, which isn't very expensive. But here's a little project you can make with a soldering iron. You're going to need a soldering gun. This is a, uh, this is a Sears. This is a 230 and 150 watt soldering gun. Pull the trigger halfway, you got 150. Pull it all the way, you got a 230. Comes with a couple of different tips going with the screws. If you buy one of these, make sure the screws are tight. If the screws aren't tight, the electricity won't go through in sufficient amperage to heat up the tip and you'll be frustrated. So if your tip's not getting hot, tighten the screws. And you're going to have to do what's known as tinning. Now I've, I've turned the soldering on, soldering iron on. You're going to have to get some solder. Here I went to the shack again and got some uh, rosin core solder. You don't want acid core. I don't think they make a lot of it anymore anyway. As, uh, acid core leads to corrosion. So you have to do what's known as tinning and we're tinning the soldering iron. And I should have a paper towel. Okay, it should be tinned. And you're going to do a lot of tinning. Project for the day. Solder some bullet connectors onto these wires. These are my extension wires for the, uh, the Heron project that run from the speed control which is in the fuselage to the motor which is in the tail. You don't need very much exposed. We're going to put it into this little gold bullet connector, the male part. I already did the female part. Okay, so you see the the tip turning orange? Yeah, that means it's hot. Put the solder on top of the wire and then put the tip on top of the solder and it melts it right in. Here's our, uh, our wire, put the solder on it, and then melt the solder right into the wire with the soldering iron. I'm going to have to do this on both sides. You can do it like this, if you don't have three hands. Make sure it's thoroughly tinned all the way around. Now if you get a drop of solder on something, up here, up here, If you get a drop of solder on something, even on a piece of furniture, don't have a heart attack. Because when it cools, it should cool rather rapidly on this aluminum plate. Um, 
when it cools, it'll probably come right off just like that and didn't even leave a mark. You're going to need some way to hold these little parts. Now this is for basic people, so instead of getting fancy with some kind of a rig, or uh, I decided to just use what I had at hand, which is this pair of pliers, basic needle nose pliers, and I put uh, an elastic band around it that holds a wing onto a plane. And now I'm going to try to get some solder into the, the little pocket there. I'm going to tin up this connector. Okay, we got some solder in there. Now we take our wire. I'm going to hold the wire in there, and then I'm going to heat everything up and make the solder melt together, and then hold it for a few seconds until the solder cools from a liquid back into a solid. If you've got a good vantage point, you'll be able to see the solder turned from uh, a silvery color and you, it'll dull to a kind of a color like this aluminum. Let's do that again. Because I got to do it three times because I got three motor wires. But I won't bore you with it. So I'm just going to get some solder in there grab the wire push it right into that pocket wait till all the solder is melted oh by the way that wire gets really hot so you may end up holding it with uh, a pair of pliers. No big deal. And then we're going to shrink the, put the shrink tubing down over this, cover up the connection. We can get the. Uh, shrink tubing to shrink probably with the soldering iron gun. How neat is that? Already. Kachunk. <laughs>